Hello, my name is Jerry Ratka and I'm a course developer in Juniper Network's Education Services Department. In this learning bite we're going to take a look at a new feature that was introduced in Security Director 12.2 and that's the policy locking feature. Now, Security Director used to be called Security Design but it went through a, a name change recently so throughout this presentation we're going to refer to it by its new name which is Security Director. And Security Director is a security policy management application that runs within Juno Space, our network management platform. And one of the key features that was added to version 12.2 is the policy locking feature, which is available when you're configuring a firewall and NAT policies within Juno Space. And what policy locking does is it prevents multiple users from editing the same policy at the same time, thereby reducing the likelihood of configuration errors. So with 12.2, you need to lock a policy before you can do any editing on that policy. Okay, so let's, uh, let's jump into the Juno Space application, and I'll show you what policy locking is all about. Okay, so this is the, the main landing page, the dashboard for Juno Space 12.2, and we have Security Director installed already. So from this page here, if you're used to Juno Space, you'll notice that uh, the GUI for 12.2 looks a little bit different, but it's, uh, it's very intuitive and it's easy to get used to. Uh, for example, we've got the, the task tree that's over on the, on the left here, and if we go to the top of that task tree, you'll see under Applications, it says Platform. That's because we are in the, the Platform application, which is the Juno Space application itself. So the, the dashboard that we're on and the task tree that's shown uh, below that on the left are the tasks that are associated with the Juno Space platform application. Now if we want to get into Security Director, let's click the drop down menu here, and it still says Security Design here, but if we click on that, it's going to take us to uh, the Security Director dashboard. And where it says Security Design there, that's going to be updated to the new name of Security Director in the next release of the software. So here we are on the Security Director dashboard, and again the task tree on the left has changed to show us the tasks that are associated with Security Director. Now I'm going to click on fire Firewall Policy because we want to look at policy locking, and again that's associated with Firewall Policies and NAT Policies. So let's click on Firewall Policy. In fact, I'm going to click the plus sign next to Firewall Policy just to open up that task tree, and you can see the different tasks associated underneath the Firewall Policy. Now when I clicked on firewall policy it opened a different window over here on the right and you can see we've got three policies set up already. Policy 1, Policy 2, and Policy 3. And if we select one of those policies and we look further to the right it's going to show us the rules associated with that particular policy. But notice at this point that they're still grayed out. They're read only at this point. We can't make any changes to these, to these policies. And this is where policy locking comes in. Uh, new in version 12.2 up here on the toolbar you'll see there's a, a locking section. And if I hover, hover over the button that's on the left, you'll see it says Lock Policy for Edit. So let's say I want to make some changes to Policy 2. I check the policy, or I should say I select the policy that I want to make changes to. I go up to that Lock button, click on the Lock button, and two things will happen. Number one, you'll see that the, the rules are no longer grayed out, so I've got access to those rules and I can make changes there. And also, a lock icon appeared next to policy two. And that shows me that I have an active lock on that particular policy. And by active lock, what I mean is there's a, a configurable inactivity timer that gets started every time you put a policy lock on a policy. And by default, that's set for five minutes, but you can go into the configuration and set it for a longer time if you want to. And what will happen is if, uh, if you put a lock on a policy and there's an inactivity, when you're within one minute of the timer running out, the system will pop up a message letting you know that your policy lock is about to expire in one minute, and it gives you the option of extending that timer if you want to. And there's different messages that pop up along the way as you're doing different things in the, uh, in the application, and I'll have a little bit more on those, uh, those messages a little bit later. Now another thing I should point out is uh, you can have more than 
uh, one policy locked at a time. So I've got a lock on policy two. Let's say I also want to make some changes to policy one and policy three. So I'm going to go ahead and put locks on those policies also. Okay, and again it puts the, uh, the lock icon next to each one of the policies and it starts a separate timer, a separate inactivity timer for each one of those policies. So right now if somebody else logged into Juno Space and you know this different user tried to put a lock on one of those policies they would get a message telling them that I already have a lock on that particular policy and they wouldn't be able to do anything with it right now because I own these policy locks I'm the only one that can make any changes to these policies. And by the same token you could uh, you could release a lock that you have on a policy. So let's say policy 3 I decide I don't need to make any changes to policy 3 that button that's on the left here it actually toggles between lock and unlock so I'll go ahead and click it again and that will re release the lock that I have on policy 3. You can see the icon disappears everything goes back to being grayed out. Okay there's another button up in the locking area and it's the button on the right and that's for managing policy locks. And you can either click on that button there or you can click on manage policy locks over here under firewall policy. So I'll go ahead and click on that and I'll show you what that's all about. And again, remember there's separate locks that you can put on firewall policies or NAT policies. So if we click on this under firewall policy, we're only looking at the, the firewall policy locks, as you can tell by the, uh, the bar up here in the upper, uh, upper left that we're in firewall policy at this point. So what this is going to show us is all the current locks that are on firewall policies. And that's regardless of, of user. You're going to see the locks that you have on, you're going to see locks that other users have on. And what you can do from this page here is uh, we were able to unlock a policy on one of the previous screens, but here you could select multiple policies that belong to you, multiple policy locks I should say that belong to you, and unlock them all at once from this screen. So it's a little bit more convenient for that. But really what it's for is uh, an administrator can come into here and they could forcibly unlock a lock that somebody else has on a policy. And I should say too that there's uh, we only have two policies that have locks on them right now, but this screen could be uh, full of, of many, many policies that have, uh, have locks on them. So there's a, a search bar up here that you could use to search for a particular uh, user or a particular policy name and narrow down your search results. So let's say we're, you know, we're an admin and we want to release this policy on policy one. And again, this is a lock that I currently own here, but the process is the same for, for unlocking a, uh, a policy lock, whether it's uh, you know, for yourself or an admin forcibly doing it to somebody else. So put a check mark in the box next to the policy or policies that you want to unlock. And then if you go all the way over to the right here, the upper right, click on Actions and click on Unlock. And we get a pop-up message asking us to conf confirm that. Yes, we want to unlock that policy. Then we're getting another pop-up message telling us that the lock has been released on policy one. So we'll click OK on that one. And then the screen refreshes and it shows us the remaining policy locks, which we have uh, just on policy two. And notice it's got the, the policy name that is locked. It's got the name of the user that owns that lock when they acquired that lock, the date and the time, and when it's going to expire. So this is the countdown timer over here. Okay, so if that was an admin user that was forcibly unlocking somebody else's lock, that user would receive a pop-up message letting them know that an admin had released the lock from the, the firewall policy that they had locked. So let's go back to the firewall policy page. And again, from this page here, you're just going to see your own locks on policies. And you can see I still have a lock remaining on policy two. But if you notice at the bottom of the, the pane on the right, the two buttons on the bottom are, are still grayed out. And that's because even though we have access to making changes on these policy rules, we haven't actually made any different, uh, any different changes yet. So I just want to do one more thing just to show you a few more pop-up messages that you'll get along the way here. Let's go ahead and change the, the source zone just to make a change in this policy. And once I do that, you'll see that the buttons are now available. It's either save or discard changes. And then let's say at this point, I also decide I want to make some changes on policy one. So I want to jump over to policy one. I click on policy one, but I get a message telling us that I have unsaved changes. So I have to either save or discard those changes. 
Okay, so that makes me go back to the policy I was working on, and in this case I'll just discard those changes. I get a message telling me that any changes I've made are going to be lost. So we'll just click, click, click yes there. We're not going to make any changes to those particular policies. And now I can move over to other policies to do whatever I need to do there. Okay, so like I said, there's there's different uh, different pop-up messages that occur along the way. And there's several other messages that, uh, that we haven't seen, and I'm showing some examples on the screen here, that pop up due to different actions or different circumstances that you encounter within the software. So I really recommend that you take a look at the Security Director User Guide for version 12.2, just to get familiar with the various messages that are going to pop up and the consequences of, of the different actions you can take on those messages. Okay, so that's policy locking. And again, that was added in Juno Space uh, Security Director version 12.2. I hope you found this information helpful, and thank you for viewing this Learning Byte. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.